it's Ben here, and here in this tutorial, we're gonna have a look at how we animate lines in Final Cut Pro 10. We're not gonna be using any external plugins or anything like that for this particular tutorial. We're gonna have a look at a few creative ways in which we can animate the lines, and then also use those animated lines to either combine as multiple lines or to animate things like type animations and stuff like that. So the first thing we'll do is just go to File, New, and we'll create a new timeline. So File, New Project, and we're gonna call this Lines, animation and we'll leave it at 1920 by 1080 30 frames a second that's all good and we'll click OK so the first thing we're going to do here is come into our generators where we're going to grab one of our shapes so if we scroll down here we are looking for the solids and basically we're going to choose the custom solid although you could pick another color if you wanted to so we'll grab our custom solid and basically this will drop down to the timeline it's going to be 10 seconds long as the default. We can see that in the middle here and we will just stretch this out a little bit. So it's about 20 seconds long and then we'll do Shift and Z to fit it to the whole timeline. So once we've done that, we're now gonna give this shape that we've got a color. So basically select your clip, come up to the inspector. Um, if you don't see the inspector, go to window, show in workspace and check the inspector. And then we're going to go to the generator inspector up at the top right here where we can change the color. Now we can use the color picker here to change the color or we can click on this little box and it will show us some different kind of options for RGB sliders, the color wheel um, and any swatches that we've saved down here. We'll just come along and pick from the color picker. We'll go for this nice blue. So once we've got this set up, we're gonna make our line. So basically, to make our line, we're gonna use the transform tools. So we'll come into our video inspector and we're gonna basically transform this um, in one axis. So we're gonna transform the Y scale, which is gonna essentially, as we scale this down, it's gonna make a line. So once we've got the, the line set up, we're gonna change the width of it. And we're just gonna come forward in the timeline to do that. Now I always like to find the point where I'm gonna finish my animation um, and the kind of size or position of things that when the animation is gonna finish and then go back and kind of change the start point. So we're gonna change the scale here. You can see the line shortening and we're gonna change that to 65%. And then we're gonna add a keyframe up here. So you'll notice we're just changing the X scale, we're not changing the Y scale. This is gonna stay the same for this whole animation. And then we'll bring our playhead back and we're just gonna to come to the X scale and tap in a zero there. And because we've already added one keyframe, it's gonna add a second keyframe for us. So now you can see when we play this through, it's gonna animate that line on. So that's the, the kind of first step to animating the line. Now to animate the line off, we would let this keep playing through and then basically we're gonna add another keyframe. So it holds that 65% at the end here. And then we'll come ahead a little bit and we'll type in another zero and the line will disappear. And because we've already kind of turned our keyframes on at the beginning, we'll now get this growing on of the line, that hold of the line, and then the line will animate off as we come towards the end. Now, Oftentimes when you're setting the keyframes up and kind of scrubbing back and forth, you won't get the timing right exactly as you want it when you start off. So I'm gonna right click here and just go to show video animation. And that's gonna show my keyframes, so the four keyframes I've set. So this one is at zero, this one is at 65%, 65% here, so it's basically holding between these two. And then this one is at zero. So if I move these end ones closer together, then we're gonna get a faster animation. And again, if I move these ones back, we're gonna get a shorter hold between those two keyframes. Okay, so you can see we can nicely manipulate things here as well. Now I'm just gonna make a, a duplicate of this on the timeline. So I'm gonna do Command C, come to the end here, and Command V, and paste this in, and we'll just do Shift and Z so we can see those two. So with this, example. I'm going to play forwards here. It's going to animate on. Actually, we'll just trim the beginning of this a little bit. So it's going to animate on. And then at this point, I want it to rotate by 90 degrees. So we'll turn on our keyframes here so we can see what's happening. So we've come to just after that first keyframe. I'm sort of deliberately keeping my scale and rotation keyframes a little bit separate. Um, so I'm going to add a keyframe for rotation. 
and then I'm going to play forwards and we will then rotate this by 90 degrees. So you can see now we're going to get that grow on and then it rotate. So actually I'm going to change the original scale here on this keyframe from 65 to 55. So it's a little bit shorter. So and actually you can see here this is continuing to grow up to this 65. So I need to change this one here as well. So I'm going to change this last one to 55. And actually we'll go for 45. And we'll come back here. So I just want to make sure I'm on the keyframe so you can use these back and forward arrows to make sure you're on the exact right keyframe. So now we have the animate on and it turns and I basically wanted to kind of keep it in line there. So you can see we can do this nice kind of rotation of that particular clip. So now you can see it will animate on and what we're going to do here is hold the, the position so just as it finishes rotating, we're going to add a keyframe for our position and then we'll play this forwards and we're going to have this slide to the left as that plays forward. So you can see you can do these nice kind of sharp animations, a nice twist and then that kind of move to the left like a scan almost and then it will disappear once it hits the left. And we're going to come back to this one in a little bit. So you can see they've basically done a couple of nice stars of animation there with our keyframing of the scale and the rotation. So we're going to have a look at something else here. So we're going to copy this clip from the beginning and we'll paste it on at the end here. And you can see we've got that same animation at the end. And essentially what we're going to do here is a little bit of a, a trick you can do with, with some text. So basically I'm going to duplicate this layer up. So I'm going to change the thickness of this line. So I'm going to bring my playhead uh, to the middle here and we are going to increase the thickness of this line. And then I'm going to grab a text layer. So I'm going to come up to my titles at the top left. We'll come to the bumper and opener titles and I'm just going to pick the basic title and we'll drop this on top here. So I'm just going to select our type and we'll type in some text here. And essentially what we're going to do, we're going to grab our text. We're going to make it all caps. We're going to set it to a bold typeface, just kind of increase the size of this. So it kind of fills that space and I'm going to pull it down to the middle so it kind of snaps into this box. So essentially what I'm going to do is use some of the blend modes here so that this animation here and the text combine. So if I grab my type here and come up to the top, I'm going to choose the blend mode stencil alpha, which is basically going to combine those two layers. So the text is above that original layer. And so now you can see the text is animating on as well. So I'm just going to come down here and show my video animation and we can control the speed at which that animates by kind of modifying these keyframes. We've got a couple of strange things going on here because we've got the line below as well happening. Actually that's quite sort of interesting. Let's just uh, bring the keyframes up for both of these so you can see my keyframe animations for this layer are now kind of offset with the layer below. I'm actually going to match them back up. We could play around with those and get some interesting effects, but for the purposes of this, I want to keep them reasonably lined up. They can be a little bit offset. Okay, so now you can see that's all good. So let's put those keyframes back. So now we're not seeing the, the line below here. So if I just turn these layers off by tapping V, you can see we've still got that line there, but when we turn these layers on, because of the stencil alpha option on this layer, we're hiding that line below. So I'm going to select both these layers and I'm going to right click on them and create a new compound clip, which is going to kind of marry them together. So now you can see we get the line in there as well, which is going to look like a bit of a strike through. But what we can do is if we come to our line here, the layer below, we can change the Y position and just bring it below it. And then I'm going to duplicate this up. And then we've got minus 110. So for this top one, we'll go 110 and it will put it right above it. So now you can see we get a nice match up of the title growing on and of the 
the text opening up as well. So we could actually kind of offset these if we wanted to. So we'd get this kind of effect and we could jumble around the layers as we want. So let's just trim these down a little bit. So obviously we can come down to our generators. We'll grab a texture here. We'll grab one of these metallic ones and stretch this out. And we'll just do that same kind of concertina of these coming on over the top of this metallic texture. And I'm just going to click my playhead at the end here and use option in the right square bracket just to trim all those down. So you can see now that all works quite nicely. Uh, the speed may be a little slow, but we can jump back into things and speed them up if we need to. But we're getting that nice kind of offset of these. So if we needed to kind of modify how this is all flowing, we could speed it up by moving them close together or double click into here and then look at changing those video animation keyframes. So having this kind of drop on a bit quicker. So you can see we get this nice animation um, happening just by using that line and then the stencil alpha blend mode and the compound clip. So it's really kind of a nice, simple way of, of kind of setting this up. We will also need to just kind of come into our color correction here and take out some of the, the contrast in this layer behind just so that the text stands out a bit more. So that's starting to look quite nice. Kind of nice blue, text animating on, and that's looking pretty good. And then obviously it animates off at the end. So the other thing I wanted to mention was with this line that we've got animating here, we can use the compound clip to duplicate that as well. So if I hold down my option key and just duplicate this clip up, what I want to do is rotate this by 180. So it's going the other way. So if I use Option and G, which will make a compound clip. So now this is in a compound clip. And I come up to my video options. So the compound clip itself doesn't have any animation on it. So I'm just going to type in 180. And what you'll see now is we'll get those separating out quite nicely, but matching up in the animation perfectly. So there's a few different ways you can think about animating basic lines in Final Cut Pro 10. Obviously we can use a rotation and we could do a nice offset of any one of these where we kind of have them concertina on. Let's just reduce the size here. So if I select four of these, we'll just make the Y position 50, 100 and 150. So now what we'll get is a kind of concertina of these animating on in those different positions. And obviously we can increase the, the number of layers that we have there when we're doing this. So if we move these a bit closer, we'll get a bit more of a fluid effect. Nice. So we've got some nice different options to animate lines and to kind of set things up on screen. Um, in Final Cut Pro 10, we don't have to go into motion or anything like that to, to kind of set these things up. And we can obviously kind of work on the speed and pace of this, but at some point you will definitely want to go into Apple Motion to work on these animations. It's going to give you a lot more control and editability over titles, especially if you're repeating things in different projects. However, hopefully this is a kind of little useful insight into how to animate the basic line in Final Cut Pro 10, and then also how you can use that line or animate that line with other elements such as text or video uh, to kind of create these kind of nice animated composites. If you have any questions about Final Cut Pro 10, then do please leave them in the comments below. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you on the next tutorial.